Let's talk about what recently happened at Jackson Wang's London concert. Now before all of you Jackson Wang fans out there start thinking of ways to try and kill me, I'm not here to say bad things about Jackson Wang. I actually kind of agree with him. Maybe. But anyway, today's video is not here to say what a horrible person he is. This video is mainly just my personal view on why I think he is both right and wrong at the same time. For those of you who don't know what happened at Jackson Wang's concert in London, he basically had a little speech uh, for himself and for his country. And he basically called Western media BS. He said it was propaganda BS. He also proudly introduced himself as Jackson Wang from China. Some people support him and a netizen actually said that I'm so moved and full of respect towards him. How many celebrities dare to speak up for their countries as bravely as him? Well some other people also commented on like how Jackson Wang supported the Chinese government in persecuting the Uyghur ethnic group in Xinjiang, China. And they just immediately like unsubscribed from Jackson Wang. Now I personally, I'm not involved in like Jackson Wang activities. I merely saw him on like a couple YouTube videos and I just thought, you know, he's a pretty nice guy. He's like a true gentleman, which is kind of hard to come by in idols. But this recent incident made me realize one thing is that the majority of people, whether you are a Jackson Wang fan or you're a hater of Jackson Wang or a random person watching this video on YouTube is that the majority of people they do not know the difference or they can't differentiate the difference between the government of China and the country and culture of China. Government and culture, two different things. The government of China does not represent the 5,000 years of traditional Chinese culture and vice versa. The Chinese traditional culture does not represent the communist ideals of the government of China. Jackson Wang in his concert, he expressed his love and patriotism for his country. And he said one line and I quote, if you travel to China one time, you'll feel like this is a dope place. Now, I don't know about you, but the feeling I get is that he's talking about the people and the culture of his country, not necessarily the government. While on the other hand, Western media is mostly commenting about the decision and actions that the government of China took. So why would I say that the government and the culture of China are two complete different things? Well, first of all, the government of China right now, which is the Communist Party of China, is actually a foreign power. If you trace communists back to its origin, it can be led to Karl Marx and his Communist Manifesto and the Soviet Union. So here is a brief history of how the Communist Party of China came to rule over China. So during back when the Japanese invaded China, it was during the Republic era. And so the Republican Party of China went to defend the country from, in, from the invading Japanese. While the Communist Party of China were like, was like standing in the shadow and amassing its force. And after the war ended, the Republican army was diminished. They were weak from fighting. And so with support from the Soviet Union, the Communist Party of China pushed back the Republicans into Taiwan and took over China. And I remember reading about this propaganda that the Communist Party told the people of China when they were taking over. They said, under the rule of the Republican Party, you guys lived in horrible conditions. And now I'm just thinking, well, of course they lived in horrible conditions. It was a warring period. The Republican went to fight the invading Japanese. 
Of course, it would be a very harsh time to live in, right? You're fighting against invaders. But however, the Communist Party did not stop there. After taking over China, it launched many campaigns and many revolutions to try and brainwash and reshape the Chinese people. Because one, traditional Chinese culture believes in a higher being or a higher power that looks after the human world. But in communist ideals, they believe in atheism, materialism, and forced equality. And these are pretty much like the opposite of traditional Chinese culture. And so they launched all these reforms to try and reshape the Chinese people and the Chinese culture. For example, in 1966 to 1976, it was called the Cultural Revolution because they launched so many revolutions against culture itself. The Communist Party tore down numerous ancient temples and they burned many ancient texts, which were hundreds if not thousands of years old. And these are all precious relics from the ancient past, from our ancestors, and they just destroyed a lot of it in 10 years. And during those 10 years, not only did they destroy historical relics and historical sites, but they also executed numerous intellectuals who studied, who were educated, and who studied in like universities, whether overseas or in China. And they executed these people because they wanted the people to be equal. And at the same time, they took down landlords and wealthy people because they wanted to be equal with everyone. They wanted forced equality. Now, I don't know about you, but that sounds not quite right if equality is forced upon the people. And you would think that the Communist Party would stop there in like 1977 or like 1976, but they didn't. During the early 1990s, it was the rise of qigong practices or like energy practices. You can kind of think of it as like tai chi or like yoga meditation. It's like something like that. That is kind of what qigong is. And among like the numerous meditation practices out there, there was one that stood out really popular among the people. And it was called Falun Dafa or Falun Gong. Now it's a spiritual meditation that is rooted in three virtues called truthfulness, compassion, and tolerance. Now these are like pretty universal virtues and values that pretty much everyone thinks, yeah, that's good, that's a good virtue. And because the Falun Dafa practice brought many health benefits to the people who practiced it and many, you know, mental stability and mental health as well to the people, it rose in popularity. And it even, I, I believe it even surpassed the number of communist party members. And so obviously in the eyes of the communist party, this was a threat because not only was it rising in popularity, but this spiritual meditation practice also believed that there was a higher being or a higher power that watched over the human world. And obviously this didn't fit with the atheist ideals of the communist government. And so in about like 1999, they launched an all out persecution just to stomp out this group of peaceful practitioners. Now, if you ask me, if you want to do yoga or like you want to practice a certain meditation, that's your individual choice. And I personally don't think the government should have a say in it. But the Communist Party of China decided that they had the power to control over individual people's lives. And this persecution is actually still going on today. And I've heard that they built detention centers, illegal detainment, torture, brainwash, blackmail, all of this just to stop this practice. And I even heard that they that the government of China, they built a government office called the 610 office just specifically to target Falun Dafa and this group of peaceful practitioners. 
just to target them. I mean, that's ridiculous. A government office just to persecute a religious group. And it doesn't stop there. The government of China also persecutes ethnic groups. In recent times, I believe, not only limited to Tibetans, Mongolians, and Uyghurs. In Xinjiang, China, I heard they built cotton fields in concentration camps for Uyghur ethnic group. And they forced them to do labor every day. And they even put them in concentration camps and like try to reform them, brainwash them, and like force them under the communist rule of the government. And this is really the opposite of what traditional Chinese culture is like. Traditional Chinese culture promoted peace and inner peace, or like peace in oneself, righteousness, kindness, compassion, and respect for one another. And traditional Chinese culture also believed that there was like a greater power that watched over the human world. And this traditional Chinese culture was passed down continuously for over 5,000 years. So in a way, it is the essence and wisdom of the ancient people, of our ancient ancestors. So now that you know the difference between the government of China and the culture of China, maybe in future events, you happen to find another controversial thing about China, maybe you can kind of tell the difference between the two. But one more thing is that whether something is good or bad in life, you are the one who puts value in it. You are the one who determines if something is good or bad in life. So when you hear something from the media, the news media, don't immediately jump to conclusions and agree with what the media says. You gotta have a time to kind of process what media says and what the actual event was. You had to process it yourself before jumping to conclusions and immediately agreeing with what the media says. And this point Jackson Wang did mention in his London concert, which I agree, I definitely agree, because nowadays media, some media they stand on like certain political standings and some not so much. So when you guys, you know, hear certain news or like hear certain events happening, don't jump to conclusions that fast. Be sure to process it and think for yourself. Is this really a good thing that's happening? What are the consequences of it? Or maybe is this really a bad thing? What are the consequences of that? So back to the main topic. I think Jackson Wang merely misunderstood the difference between the government of China versus the culture and the people of China. Because Jackson Wang is born in China. Well, technically he's born in Hong Kong, but Chinese people, if you're born in the mainland, from a very young age, school will teach you that the Communist Party of China is the best. China is prospering because of the Communist Party of China. Chinese culture is amazing because of the Communist Party of China. So if you're born in the mainland China, you will grow up with all this propaganda around you and you'll naturally kind of mix up the concept of the government is Chinese culture. Chinese culture is the government of China. You'll kind of mess those two around. And I think that might be the case of what is actually happening here. Merely Jackson Wang confused the two, merely confused the government, the actions of the government with the culture of China. But in reality, the action of the government of China does not represent the people and the culture of China. So what do you guys think of this incident? Or maybe you have some questions regarding Chinese culture or like the Chinese government that you might have. Feel free to leave your comments down in the comment box below. I will try my best to answer them. And even though this video is somewhat of a serious topic, but I really wish everyone a happy Chinese New Year. 祝大家新年快乐! And I wish everyone will be in good health this year. 身体健康! 
and I hope everyone's wish will come true. 万事如意 I'll see you next time. 我们下次见。